Disclaimer. This video is just my opinion. You do not have to align with my opinion. In fact, we if you don't, that's okay because it can encourage conversation. But disclaimer, this video is just my opinion. Shall we get into it? A long time ago, I tweeted something along the lines of, oh, do you think we're too harsh on Chris Chibnall? And my goodness, my Twitter mentions blew up. So I was like, oh, there's definitely a video idea in here. And I was really, really debating as to whether I should be making this video or not. Because the last time I mentioned Chibnall or anything like that was in uh, a video I made a few weeks back talking about uh, the 60th anniversary and everything like that. And Chibnall got absolutely roasted in the comments. And I was like, oh, geez, maybe I should make this video. Maybe I shouldn't make this video. But screw it. We're here today um, and I'm going to read out some of the replies to um, that tweet. You're allowed to have a difference in opinion um, and please just be constructive. Be constructive, Chibnall's only human. So the question is, were we too harsh on Chris Chibnall? And here are the responses. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Tardis. No need for elaboration there. Yes, the way some people have talked about him and his work is terrible. You don't have to love his take on the show, but you should stay respectful when discussing it. Yeah, well put, Sophie. I feel like a lot of people are like that because I know a lot of people that aren't fans of the Chibnall era. I know people um, in my own personal life that are not fans of the Chibnall era, but they don't they don't go after the guy. No. Okay, we've got a we've got a few people that don't really want to elaborate. Maybe I should have put a disclaimer and say, hey, give me some thoughts. <laughs> but anyways, hola amigos, my name is Crispy. Um, and if you are new here, we make Doctor Who videos every single week. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing. And heck, why not hit that like button? It does help the algorithm a lot. Yeah, there's genuine criticism and then there's nitpicking and dogpiling that so many people did. Damn, you guys are smart. Look, nitpicking? I, I nitpick all the time. If there's a continuity error, I'll pick it out. But dogpiling, you know, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan. Not the biggest fan, sorry. No, respect is earned and the fact that he's torn the fandom apart for valid reasons or otherwise is hardly worthy of respect, is it? He may come in with good intentions, but it didn't work. Interesting, this one's a thinker. Like this one is one that I like could keep in the video because there were so many just like, no f Chibnall type things. Torn the fandom apart? Do we think he's torn the fandom apart? I don't know. Absolutely. It's a countdown for the people to be pining for the good old Chibnall Who, just like they did with Moffat and RTD the first time round. Mark my words. That is such a funny thought there, Andy. Wow. Because that's so true. I remember like I've made videos on it, like the Moffat hate train um, was, was huge. The Moffat hate train was huge. The ones who call him the ultimate destroyer of Doctor Who followed by numerous death threats and other nasty comments, then yes. But the ones who don't make personal attacks and just criticize his work, no. Well put, Chris, very well put, Chris, because I feel like there is an extreme and there are very loud like minority that are just like, as we've said, dogpiling and just hating and death threats. Death threats are never a good idea, guys. Yes, I don't like the Chibnall era personally but I would never resort to attacking him online. I will be curious to hear him talk about his tenure a few years later down the line. I found he often had great ideas, but poor execution. Well, that's the thing. I feel like there's so much behind the scenes stuff we don't really know about Chibnall. Like there's a whole story there um, that Chibnall almost left the show during uh, the pandemic because it got it got too much and he, was, he wasn't sure if he was gonna continue on that. There's a story in that. And so I would love to see like a tell-all interview from Chibnall a few years down the line. I'm pretty sure he's done one recently where he kind of like, let's loose a little bit, but surely in a few years, we just hear all, all the tea. Isn't that what the kids say? Spill the tea, sis. I'm almost 25 years old. Fans is not the word I'd use. That's the thing, you know, with the, there's a whole debate when it comes to fandom and people like caring so much for the show. So much for the show. Like Doctor Who is 60 years old. So for someone to consistently love the same thing for 60 years is a hard ask. Unless of course it's like the person you're married to. <laughs> Absolutely. He seems like a top bloke. His who writing has been hit or miss for me, but he seems like a lovely guy. Dad energy. Chibnall does definitely give off dad energy. Big dad energy. And that comment was made by the 50% Doctor Who podcast, and I recently made 
a cameo in one of their episodes where they reviewed In the Forest of the Night, or as I like to call it, In the Forest of the Sh- Yes and no. Some people basically reamed him calling him the ultimate destroyer of Doctor Who. And I once even saw a video essay called How Chris Chibnall Destroyed Doctor Who, which is extremely harsh. But then some people gave constructive criticism, which IMO is fair. And look, constructive criticism is fair, as we've discussed. Um, but the video essay you might be talking about is from JXC. Like JXC has this like hours and hours long video essay where he basically goes in and deconstructs the Chris Chibnall era. Um, and you know, I was ready to not be a fan of that video, but JXC does make some really, really good points um, in there. And you know, that is constructive criticism. Absolutely. Some have accused him of destroying the show. Others have compared him to the Antichrist. It's not the way to express critics towards Chibnall's approach as showrunner, including his style of writing. Chris Chibnall is only human, and he was a big fan of the show growing up, um, as you've seen probably in that infamous clip. You know, he, he constructively criticized Doctor Who all the time. Um, so, you know, he was a fan just like us, okay? A tad, maybe. Thanks, Leo. People weren't allowed to criticize him without being branded as a bot or NMD. With toxic fandom, there are two sides, basically. There's toxic negativity and toxic positivity. And there were people that will like defend the show so much that if anyone, you know, speaks poorly of it, they'll go, no, they're a, they're a hater of the show. They're a hater of the show. And like, I've even admitted that some parts of the Jody era, I am not a big fan of. I, I've said it multiple times, all for 55, get out of here. And I've been criticized for not liking that episode, but hey, that is my opinion. So I think maybe as I'm reading this, um, the conversation that needs to be had is criticism is okay, just don't be a sh person. It's very basic, very basic stuff, very human stuff, but I think we can do it. Anyone who criticized his work, no. Anyone who attacked him personally, yes, that is too far. I strongly dislike what he has done with the show. That being said, he seems like a nice enough guy and doesn't deserve any personal hate. Well put, I love this comment, well said. Were those people really fans though? Not from the tweets I've seen the last few years. Yeah, look, as I've said, yes, like the fandom is huge. It is, it is massive. And there are people that are very, very protective of the show um, and anything that changes, oh no. Mm -mm -mm. Not harsh enough, jeez. Ouchies. Definitely, he's been overwhelmingly criticized by series 11 episode one. It's never stopped for him with every episode being the worst for so much. Plus the pandemic caused Flux last minute having to have him right from scratch near production, probably putting him through hell. I want a full 90 minute behind the scenes of Flux from how they did the production, how they changed the scripts, um, how Chibnall like rearranged series 13. I want to know how they did it and how they pulled it off because you, you can have your opinion on Flux, but what they were able to achieve in a pandemic is unreal. Nah, his time on the show has been a massive step down from Moffat's run, and his writing in particular just isn't what it used to be. The era had some bright spots, Villa Diodati, Demons of the Punjab, etc. but IMO, people criticizing Chib's writing are entirely justified. Interesting, I like the fact that this guy highlights some good, but he's like, you know what? I didn't like it. Interesting. Not really. I was a bit bored by his era. Sad, because Jody could have been better. The writing let her down. That's really interesting because I would have loved to have seen how Jodie would have been written by Moffat or Davies because I feel like one thing that Jodie's Doctor lacks was just those more serious moments. Like she's got that manic Doctor energy. It's all there um, and she nails the serious moments she's given but she isn't given that many. No. Moffat and every showrunner slash writer since Year Dot has gotten the praises and some of the boos of others. Thanks to social media, the fans' response is quicker. The same is true for any media. Damn, I did not think about that. Because yeah, we do live in an era now where social media is so prevalent. Like we, oh, my light went out. Probably time to wrap up these videos. But yeah, please let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think about Chibnall's era and Chibnall in general? Do you think the fandom is too harsh on him? Please let me know in the comments below. And please, for the love of God, be respectful, okay? We're a respectful channel. That's what we're about here at Crispy Pro. And heck, while you're at it, please like this video as it does help the algorithm and subscribe if you have not already. We are gradually getting towards 30,000 subscribers and I could not be happier and thank you guys enough. Oh, and I also have a podcast called Who's There? A Doctor Who podcast. You should definitely check it out. That's gonna do. I love you guys lots. Um, and yeah, be kind to one another. Take care. Allons-y!